<clears throat> Ooh, morning everyone so I've I've meant to be getting James at um, about half past eight but I had a call from a lady yesterday they've got problems they've got tripping RCD they've had so much rain and I said it's probably water got in somewhere so I'm going to go and have a look first so James I'm coming mate but I'm going to do this call out first and let's go and see what this lady's um, electrical problem is So I've narrowed it down to the, this cable here. Feeds this garage board. Um, split load RCD, obviously tripping it off. So we'll take the cover off that. It's nothing obvious. If not, that cable has gone down somewhere, which is unfortunate. So pretty standard. Um, they put four core cable and they're using the SWA's the earth, but I don't know how they've landed it at the other end because they've just cut it off. Um, so we'll have to check that. There's a blue and a yellow they've just cut off and they're using the red and the black as a live and neutral. But it's on a 16, I think it's a 1.5. 1, 1. So we're going to have a look. I've turned this off now, so hopefully this cable is good and it's something in the garage that's faulty. So cable tests perfect to the garage now, but we've got, that's been getting hot on the light bulb. That is sat in there, I'm not, I'll get it up the other way, seal that and then we'll recheck the other light. Well, I thought this was fed from next door, but that's next door's. This is theirs and look, look at that. That's absolutely full of water, so let's have a look. These have a special key, but I haven't got one on me. What you say? Found it. Look at that. Connections at the bottom. Why would they do that? It's a satin water. So what I'll do is put a new LED lamp in there. Keep them out. Clean that. Check it works. The Lord said, and there was. Get their freezer on. That's been off for a while, hasn't it? Okay. I will suggest that they don't have it on extension lead, but so that's back on for them. Don't know what that switch does. It's a bit two way. And let's check these outside lights now. I'm guessing it's that one. Have a look. So neither of the outside lights are working. Um, let's have a look. So that light that was full of water is there, there's the cable. Comes along here, goes down to that switch. And I thought, where the hell is the supply to the other one? <laughs> Look, <laughs> it don't do nothing. So I'll take that down and then I think they have to get a new light. That's it, new light. Don't do nothing. That's knackered. So I'm gonna leave the lamp out. We're gonna have to come back and do a new light if they want me to. Right, here we go. James, we've isolated. James is going to go round. So what we've got to do is strip out all these old points. Client's done a great job. He's lifted the floor. We've got our double socket in over there. But what the client's doing, he takes all this render off. So we can break that off. 
He then battens the walls out 50 mil and puts insulation in because this hasn't got any insulation in this house. So that's going, that's going. We're adding one in over there, two over there, one over there, but first we're going to just make sure the circuit is um, electrically sound. So are they all off, mate? Yeah. Yeah, yeah happy? Yeah. Happy? Yeah. Yeah, so there's that one, those two. those two, and that's it. Yeah. yeah. Great. Right. So this is marked up as a 20 amp socket. Um, that goes off to a landing socket out there. That one goes, where does that go? That goes to there. So there was two spurs off of the junction box. And then I'm hoping this is a ring. If not, um, it's just gonna be a radial, but we'll test it now anyway. Done is they've just, what they've done is just place that on and then splice in those two. It's quite an old school way of doing it, but obviously we need to, rip this out now so we'll take it off that socket and check our ends there so mate set the meter to continuity to the right one click no that's insulation one click continuity look yeah oh, that's, oh, that's it yeah that's it yeah <laughs> put them together cock them together press a button seriously but for some reason, this has been playing up, so we're gonna, ever since they calibrated it, and then do it again. Right, zero, that's fine, right. So go on your R1s, which is your lives. Okay, yep, and then squeeze them down. So squeeze the crocs and then press him. So there's nothing there, okay, so it could be a radial. So do it, same on the neutrals, RN. Yep, nothing, and then the CPC. Nada. So this is more than likely going to be a radial circuit. It is on 20, which is, which would make sense, yeah? So we've just been and checked. That cable there comes from the board. He runs round, he was jointed there. He runs up to there, goes back along there. Comes along, comes along comes up to this socket and then comes out of that socket and he drops downstairs goes to the sockets downstairs so what we need to do now james is um go and unplug everything down in the room in a minute and we're just doing insulation resistance on this yeah right our cable from the consumer unit that's good is Fine. So there's a lot to be said about this old tinned copper because this is like war shortage stuff. Copper shortage. So the cable from the board's fine. That then runs along, does a socket, goes downstairs. So we need to go down now, just check if there's anything else plugged in, yeah? So that cable from the board we know is clear. We've just been and found something else plugged in. So we've got 26.34, remember only testing on 250. Neutral nerf. It's complete dead. And that's 31.26 mega ohms. So, hmm, I reckon there's a junction box under the floor downstairs. It's not up to much, so we're gonna have another look, mate. <laughs> So fair play to the client, Ashley. You can probably hear he's downstairs now. Um, he's lifting floorboards for me because we've got a faulty junction box under the floor. So fair play to it, mate. So we found it. There's a damaged cable in the floor. The cable, it's got a big, um, it's like three foot gap and all the cables are just laid on the floor. So one cable between the socket and the radial, it's damaged. So I'm going to put this circuit back together and we can we can use this circuit now because it's tested out fine. Even though it's 50 years old, believe it or not, it's tested out fine. So yeah, we can get on with something now. Whew. Right, we're back upstairs now. We've connected all them sockets up. Back up, we've left that dodgy leg disconnected now. So fingers crossed. 
fingers crossed we've got a good reading across the board. Great. What we'll do now, 500 quickly. 500, go. Let's see if we can get a good reading. So when this, this board has got a, it's got a, a 16th edition plastic, so I'm just wondering whether this cable has gone faulty since, or, um, there we go. Or the guy knew it was faulty, who knows? There we go. Right, we can actually get on with some work now. So this is the cable that runs downstairs, feeds uh, one, two, three, four sockets downstairs. That's like an end of radial now. So we need to put a Wago box. We're gonna use, James, bring the box. <sighs> and the boxes. Yep, we've got the seven, seven threes. And the boxes to go with, yeah. You can always tell which are the right ones because the two two ones that's a, for a two 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 or a seven seven three. The two two ones have got the three ports. I don't know if I've got any. They seem to be in short demand at the moment. No two ports again, so we can put those in there like so. Okay, we're going to use those here with a stranded. You have to make them off again because that won't push in where it's been sort of crimpled behind the socket. So we'll put one in here. And obviously we've got the fixing point there we will use. Never, they never give you them, look, there they are, those little little fixing points. We'll nick them off of those ones. Joint here, extend over to here, and we've just got to create a radial, basically. So James is going to do it. <laughs> He's doing it all. Look at me, cheap little McAllister, still going strong. So we're going to go 300 to the bottom. They don't want them at 450. We were going to go 300 there, so I need to just get the laser up. Haven't got the tripod. Well, I have, but I can't bother to bring it in, to be honest. So I'm hoping what we are, what we short, possibly that box. Get him on. I'm going to get a green sighted Makita laser, but they're really expensive. So hopefully, look at that. Bang on, isn't it? And obviously if you do it via your laser, there we go, that's good enough, 300. If we do it via the laser, then um, you know that it's gonna be straight. So look, if you look there, we are 290 and over here, we are 290, so it ain't too bad. I can then just literally swing that laser around and that'll give me the socket height over there as well. So because the client is battening out the wards, I've got some 50s and some 25s. I haven't got any um, skeleton boxes. So we're just gonna bolt those together like that. Let's drill through the holes, long screws, come in the back there, come through the socket there, and then that's gonna give him his 75 mil. Um, because what he does, he fixes a batten to the wall, 50 mil batten up, because these walls bow, so he's not gonna fix to the wall as such, but um, we wanna get finished them on rather than putting horrible plasterboard boxes in, so we're gonna use these, okay? Right, that's what we're going with. Lasers on the bottom. Two grommets in the bottom there. So they'll just come up looping, come up through the socket. These will just get clipped because it's just gonna get plasterboard on it. James is back with some PPE for our ears and a bag. Yeah, just breaking that. Right, we have pulled the cable out, went over there to a joint box. That's a feed cable from the board radial, yeah? Comes out here. So now we've rerouted him. We're gonna clip him along, take him to that socket, probably go out of that socket, over to that socket, out of that socket. We've got to pick that cable up. So unfortunately we are gonna to have to put a Wago box under the floor because that goes down to the chimney breast. So we'll have to put a box there. We'll then come along, 
box that one up because that feeds a socket out in the corridor out there and then that will be end of radio if you like over there obviously if it comes there then it will go downstairs but there'll be maintenance free joints we'll use the connect box with the wago connectors all the sockets are up up spaced off as the client wanted them we've broken off the bit of horrible plaster that's all fallen off and then we can just wire these up now okie doke so new socket cables feeding a lot of you like to see the cable work underneath so just keep it neat nicely clipped that's going to be wago box picks up corridor socket okay it's clipped along 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 this is now i i didn't i thought i'm not going to have a, another cut in so he's there picks up those two james drilled me some holes original cable comes up and then cheers ashley runs up and picks up the socket there so we're just going to put cut the clips in this wall as i said this is getting 50 mil batten and um plasterboard so obviously it's gonna be more than 50 mil because he's going to build a frame so he's got 75 mil there to play with so it's all wired we are going to second fix get it on because it does the sockets downstairs plus the client he's he's a competent person he can work around the sockets he just lets them off puts them back on so this is actually the second bedroom i've done in this house um we did the other bedroom exactly the same um yeah but i reused the old immersion circuit for that one because i knew it was good but this one we've reused the old socket circuit in here but is what it is so we're now going to make these off we're going to get some fly leads earth the back of the boxes because we can and then um get the socket second fixed and get it all tested I'm yet to get James some funky socks. He's just got normal black things on. <laughs> but this is um, five star dining now. Sandwich time. Whew. We just literally got a second fix now. Do cut the joints under here. We'll, we'll show you them. Do some testing. Um, luckily I know where end of line radio is now. Uh, keep it a true radio. I know you guys like that. Mm -hmm. Right, so we're using this box with a 773 i believe let me know if i'm wrong these are rated at 24 amps these ones so we're on a 20 amp radio which is fine so max rating but then you see this um so we're going to be using these ones max cable size 2.5 which is what we've got we just got the old 2.5 stranded which is uh fine i hope these are good for stranded i'll have a quick look as it says so we're going to use those um it won't these won't do flex because obviously the flex is too soft to push in um, you can put a feral crimp on but it's up to you but i'm just going to use them in there now so i'm going to put them here i'm going to fix them to the side here with a little bracket that you get it's literally one screw one screw goes in there and then he just slides on there and then we have to put a cable tie there apparently Right, as you can see, I've got the 773s all off. They're made the same length. I fixed this. It's literally, you put that little bracket on and he slides in there. These now fixed in. What we can do now is dress these in. You can put them in whichever ones you want. It doesn't really matter. We can go like that. They go in the little terminal slots there. One, two, three, and then get them. Get the last one in, get that, one, two and three are in. Okay, like that, squeeze them shut. That's now done, nice and neat, up out of the way and we'll just put a little cable toy through there, that's it. Right, circuit has been powered up. We're on a TT. What, what was our mains, James? Our ZE at the board? What was our ZE at the board again? What? One. It was 152, was it? Go back a page. So ZE was 152.3. Obviously, we've got some parallel path six. We've got 152 at the sockets. We'll just check this one over here. We've already done our RCD, we've got a 30 milliamp type AC RCD. Uh, 
So obviously you want 200 ohms, under 200 ohms, a bit high, but it's acceptable. 152.3, so you can put 152.3 yeah. on our ZS, yeah? Rubbish. Rubbish. Vic the Spiders. <sighs> oh, sorry, mate. Go on. Go on. Go on. Go on. Oh. There he goes. He's gone. He's been evicted. Let's get on. Move slow and mend things. I like that. Do you like that, James? Good, yeah. So he's put up the fancy little hanging light. The client's going to get a filament lamp for that, I believe. We've took down the second dodgy bulkhead light. There must be a little a sparky fitting them around here because it's the same area. Now we've got an earth continuity and this light fitting here. So we've got to put the back plate up and then um, we've got the twin. The twin Knightsbridge TLC. Very nice. Camera. Oh, can you get that door for me, mate? Thank you. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it smells like anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Just finished some outside lights. Luckily, it's just started to bucket it down. Right. Stay there. Don't go anywhere. Right. That's it, another job. That is frosty. Right, another job, James. Mm -hmm. See you tomorrow. Take care, see you on the next one. Bye. Bye. <laughs>